السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Welcome guys Today we are going to discuss this term I must, We must have read some Christian sages There are three persons within the being of God Okay Or there are three persons in God Okay When you hear this statement you're like what? Who talks like that? You know So they always make that comparison like okay We are not like the Muslims or the Jews who believe there's only one person within the being of God. We don't even talk we don't even talk this way, by the way. You don't hear any Muslim or any Jew saying there's only one person within the being of God. But no problem, we understand what you are trying to say. Anyway, I want you guys to examine this. What does it mean for there to be three persons within the being of God? You see, before you appeal to mystery, because that's what they end up doing most of the time, they start off as if they know what they're talking about saying we are not like the Jews you know for you to make a distinction between two ideology you must be familiar with it okay so you know what you're saying right right now but when we examine what you're saying you appeal to mystery like you don't know what you're saying anyway let's go deep into what does it mean so ask yourself this question just write it down write it down like this three persons within God three persons in God okay write it down because I'm going to show you now how it contradicts with the idea of all what you want to say at the end of the day. So, if you have three persons in God, is God like a container? So, that term God there, you have three persons in God. So, God is like the, the one container that has three persons inside of it. Because you, have, you said it, three persons in God, three persons within the being of God. So there's the being of God and then there are three persons in there. Fine. Because it's, what it looks like is this. Imagine I told you there are three students in the class. Okay. So you have class. You have one class and I told you there are three students within that class. There are three, three students in that class. Okay. You understand. Everyone understands that. So there's a class and then there are three members in there. Is that what you're saying? Now I'm going to show you why it's problematic. So now you have attached that term God to that class. So that has three persons in there. Now they want to also say this. They want to go further and say, yeah, after that, then each person is also God. Each person in that being of God is also God. Now this is very problematic. It's either each person is God or the entire class is God. Let me show you what I mean. Imagine we name this class of three students, we name it class A, okay? We call it class A. Can we say each one member of that class to say, the, the, uh, let's say there's a student called uh, whatever his name, the first student, can, can we say is the uh, class A? It's not possible because each person is just in that class, is a member. You cannot adequately say one person in a class is the entire class, no? Is the three of them that make up that class, not in each individual. Now, I think what you can say to, to make it clear is to say that each person in that class deserves to be in the class. Listen to this. Each person in the class is a proper member of that class. You can say that. But you cannot say it's equal, numerically identical to the entirety of the class. Such that in the case of the Trinity, it's the same issue, guys. It's the same issue. On the one hand, if you want to call the entire uh, God that contains three persons, if that is what is God, each one of the persons cannot be God. So it's only when the three of them are together that you have God. Okay? But when you now want to say, like in the Athanasian Creed, you now hear statements like, each of them is fully God again. What do you mean fully God? But actually, you know, a lot of Christians today, they are not familiar with the arguments that happened in the past. So when the patristic fathers were arguing about the son, they were trying to prove the deity of the son. Okay, everyone knew the father was God. Okay, but the son and the Holy Spirit, they were trying to prove their deity. When, what, what do you mean proving their deity? They want to show their equality to the father. So all the whole argument was about is the father and the son are they equal? Are they co-equal with the father? Okay, that was their task. That was, that was what they were trying to achieve. Okay, so anything the father have, they want to transmit it to the son and the Holy Spirit. So if the father is eternal, they want to say, even though the son is begotten, the son is also eternal. 
you see they transferred all those attributes of god to the son and the holy spirit to show that the son is pro is also properly god in one sense okay so what i see is that imagine the, the three students we gave as an example those three students are inside one class we can say each one of them is a proper member of that class such that none of them is more what's it called uh entitled to be in that class than the other all of them equally deserve to be in the class that's what it means like you can say each one of the students deserve to be in that class no one has more rights than the other ones okay fine <laughs> but none of them is the entire class now if you make god the thing that contains three persons within that that has within it three persons none of those persons can be properly called god because it's not three persons but this is where they're not, there's not distinction between the christians some of them have gone the way of the what's it called they have gone the way of the social trinitarians the social trinitarians they see this problem they're like okay we are not saying there's a uh, three persons within the being of god in the sense that god is like a class no we are saying it in the sense that each one of them is god so the social trinitarians they're saying each one of them is actually god such that you have three gods clearly and they use other methods to try and unify them they unify them on the basis of uh what's it called love uh inseparability many other things but they admit that see you have three beings there okay they're not confused that there's one being one what do you mean one being if you, even if there's one being it just means they share the same nature just like three human beings three human beings they have the same human nature yet they are three okay so that's the science they mean they mean like in a universal essence universal essence like shareable like humanity human nature and other natures okay that's the social trinitarians then you have the other guys the other guys them they, they want to say that the class the entirety of god has three persons in there so these these are the people they call them the oneself oneself trinitarians okay these guys they believe god has three personality or something like this or three modes okay three proper modes in a sense not modernism, this is not even modernism by the way. But these guys, they have reduced the person to like kind of part. So like I explained to you, none of the persons will be properly God. So when you say someone is fully divine, when you say fully fully God, do you mean that he has just you know, by the way, just let's just end this video. You know they have made a comparison, I see. The Muslims and the Jews they are saying there's only one person within the being of God. We, we are saying there are three persons within the being of God. Fine, you have made that contrast and we understand what you're trying to say. But the conclusion of saying this, you have to accept it too. Okay? So we we say we have one God because there's only one person within the being of God. Fine. But the Father is not one person within any being of God. Do you see? Because if you have three Unitarian gods, you have three gods. Do you have three Unitarian gods? No. You want them to share one particular being in a concrete sense. In a concrete sense because if you share it in a concrete sense it will be partialism this is what they call partialism none of them will have it fully but if they share it in an abstract sense like a universal then each of them just have it and you still have three gods see by the way then there's the middle there's the middle ground by the way you think you have caught them no these guys they will further say we don't know the mysterious the mysterious they don't have any position they're going to tell you see i know this is what i'm supposed to say I don't know what's going on there even after saying we are not the jews we are not this one we are not that they don't understand the origin of these terms let me give you one good example to end this video there's a church father his name is basil saint basil of caesarea okay this individual he chose the one of the one being there he said the one being there is a universal like divinity so he wants to maintain his whole purpose is to show that the son is fully god like the son, the son has that divine nature the same divine nature that the father has and the holy spirit has they have the same divine nature meaning each one of them have it fully okay just like humanity i have humanity you have if i have human nature you have human nature even though we are different you see we are three human beings uh, if we have three uh human persons you have three human beings okay because their own argument at that time by the way i'm already making this too long but i hope you guys learned something from this video the argument they had at that time it wasn't about uh three gods they didn't care as long as they have full divinity it was sufficient for them to maintain monotheism for some reason okay 
because they were counting the essence they were counting which essence are we talking about if you have two different essences then you have two gods but then they're saying they have the same human nature okay so that was enough for them to maintain monotism even though today we will criticize that okay we will criticize that but that was their whole point to show that they are they are they don't have distinct divine natures but i hope you get the point the moment you choose three persons within the being you ask yourself that question do i even know what this means three persons within the being of god okay so i hope you learned something from this video so see you guys later let me see what you think about this so assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh